harvesting my crops. Imagine where you will be, and it will be so. What we do in life echoes in eternity. So we've done a few videos on the Autel Evo Max 4T um, and we've got it back in because there's been a recent update that I think we maybe missed literally the day we sent it back. Um, so the biggest things to come out are towards the AI recognition and also the millimeter length wave, millimeter wave radar, millim the millimeter length wave radar. Got there in the end. So there's also a few little other things within these features that we're going to test out. Um, so I've just come to slightly run down old ruin to test out the millimeter length wave radar. Know it now. Um, it's a bit windy today, so I don't want to push it. But let's just see how it works. I'm going to see if there's an option in the menus. You're going to kind of find out and learn with me. Uh, without further ado, let's get the drone in the air and um, test out these new features. As you can see, quite windy. And it's really fighting that wind. I'll just start screen recording here. Right, let's check out the settings right now for the obstacle avoidance. So right now the obstacle avoidance is set to one meter warning distance, one meter, so it's gonna just let me fly until I hit that one meter. Um, I'm not sure how you get it down to the millimeter length. Uh, that's not too clear right now. If you press off OA, will not automatically slow down or hover when it detects an obstacle, please fly with caution. So that's just gonna turn off the obstacle avoidance completely, which isn't what we want. So I don't really understand where the millimeter wavelength radar system comes in, possibly through the waypoint system or a tracking system, but let's just fly and see what it does. So we'll start by going through here, which will do fine. You can see it's definitely detecting those obstacles, even though it's not necessarily showing it on screen. Right, I need to take the camera with me. The next gap I want to try is about here. We're gonna see how it does with that. Okay, that was quite impressive. You could see there and on screen, it was sort of figuring out what it didn't want to go near. And it seems like it's sort of happy when it gets to about, obviously it's down to a meter. You can see it's happy when it knows it's a meter away and then it flies as normal. So quite a sophisticated system for what I've seen, different from anything I've flown before. And um, I immediately felt it there. Um, so we're going to go and try something a bit more sophisticated around the corner. Now we know how it works. So now we're going to try and bring it through here. As you can see, this is not necessarily a particularly scientific way of trying it. This is just sort of me taking it out in the field, seeing what we can do. I'll just give you a quick overview of the site. It's very nice here, you can see in the wide angle lens. It might just stop completely here. That is quite a gap, we'll go up a bit. Incredible. So for that one there, you could see it didn't quite like the very bottom of the gap, which there was, a, there was a bit of science to that one. But as I slowly went higher and it was a bit wider, it was like, okay, I'm good to go through it now. So it's not just gonna force itself through the gap thinking, oh, I've got millimeter length wave radar, I, I can go for anything. Um, it is gonna keep your drone safe. Um, and it is, you know, a high-end drone, so you want to make sure you're not crashing it, but it's also one you want to really push to its limits. and. Uh, so we'll just do one more, because I don't want to break it before we get to that video. Um, which is similar to internal inspection, where we're going to go to a little, like, sort of broken down cave bit over there. And then that's us done on testing this wavelength radar. I don't think I'll ever get that. So as you can see, we're going in here using the pointer of the finger. That's what we're going for. Uh, I'm just going to concentrate and we'll see how the drone gets on inside. Um, I'm going to turn the light on as well. so it can get more feedback below it. So as you're watching on screen, to turn the light on, you just click auxiliary light. So you turn on the landing light, I can see that's on over there. 
We'll bring it down now. Let's see how it gets on. Take a nice and easy angle a bit closer just to get a good view. Uh, but four cables zoom in. Trying to find the best angle here. Bring it down a bit. It's not liking it, and I really don't want to push it and bring this craft down. I'm just going to give it one more effort, see how we get on. It's just sort of refusing to go forward for this one. Ooh. It's one of those where I probably could turn the obstacle avoidance off and push it through, but that's when something normally goes wrong. I really want to, come on now. So I think we'd say mission failed on that particular one. Um, it just really wasn't, I was pushing it forward and it really didn't want to go through, um, which is probably for the best, it was a bit of a dodgy one. But uh, right, so let's move on to the AI um, at a different location where we can really see how this new system is working. So as well as additions to the millimeter wave radar, there's been a few updates to the AI recognition system, as well as, I'm sort of including now, the ability to follow vehicles and people. So in the past, when we clicked AI, um, we would get all these um, options popping up, and you could see that it's picking up all the vehicles and the people. And I definitely said in the original review that it's a pretty incredible system. It's very sophisticated, the way it can pick up so many vehicles on screen. Um, in terms of the new uh, features with this, you can see at the top left here, just above that, um, it gives you exact information as to all the vehicles, boats and people that it sees on the screen. So right now it's telling me there's 22 cars, there's 10 trucks, um, no humans at the moment. Um, which is, <laughs> that's mad, just to have that sort of information at your fingertips. But now to be able to track, you're going to need to go to the top right and click more. and it's your tripod here. But we want to add that to sort of our hub at the top. So what you want to do is press this little pencil, press plus, and you can see it adds it to your little hub at the top here. So if we click off AI and press tripod, so as you can see, once you press tripod, it gives you all these options um, for something to follow. Now you can either press or you can quickly drag a box around something to specifically follow it. I'm just waiting for something to come on the road here. It's not normally this quiet. So I'll follow this van here. As you can see, I just drew a box around it. And you, I'm just zooming in manually there. And you can see it's holding it pretty well. It's an impressive AI system. We'll really push the zoom here. Is it gonna do all right behind these bushes? Yep, still got it. Okay, bit of an obstacle coming up here. Let's see if we zoom out a bit. Maybe it'll pick it up a bit easier. Yep, still got it. Okay. As you can see, it works really well. I doubt it's going to keep it going. No, it's going to lose it there. But that gives you an idea of how that works. Decided to zoom in a lot there. And it also works on people, of course, so I'll quickly just put it on me here. So let's see how it does at finding me and then following me. Just click tripod, yep, it's picked up me. Just press myself. As you can see, it's going to follow me around. Quite impressive, I must say. So let's just click off myself. So another feature within this is within the map system. So if I click AI again, where it pops up with all the cars and the vehicles, etc., and I go to the map at the bottom left here, it's gonna show that on it as well and still give me that information with all the 32 cars, eight trucks. And another thing is you can see there's a little sort of yellow 
field of view, that's showing you where the drone's facing. Um, if I move that, you can see in the maps there that it's going to move with it and it's also going to continue to show you all the vehicles within it. We're in an industrial estate, so it's working overtime here, but it's also showing you the very limits. So we just go split screen here. You can see fully how that is working. And it's pretty, pretty incredible, as I said. So there's one other small feature that's come out with the recent updates, um, is when you press record, start recording, it's gonna rec record the previous 30 seconds from when you started recording, just in case you miss anything, which is a really nice option, and I don't think I've seen that in any other drones. So that's uh, very good for it, if you just miss something just before you press that record button. So that was just a quick update on all the new things on the Autel Max 4T. Remember to check out our previous videos we've done on this drone, including the full review, um, a full run through of the Smart Controller Volume 3 from Autel, which is a very nice bit of kit. Um, and also we've done a little bit looking at the night mode. Uh, so they'll be in the description, make sure to check them out. If you've got any questions about the Max 4T or any other drones, don't hesitate, hit us up in the comments. Make sure to check out our website and also remember to subscribe. A lot of information there. Um, and I'll make sure to catch you on the next one.